I did quickly just go over everything that's coming in this time running pandemonium event or wow remix but uh, let's see if I missed anything here. Bellular is going to quickly go over everything coming in this new remix event. Welcome back. Today things are actually pretty damn interesting because the PvE event is here. Plunderstorm came out, and for a lot of people, because there was PvP involved, well, it was instantly more of a blunderstorm, and for a lot of people, they just, you know, they didn't want it. If you didn't want that, I think this might actually be quite interesting too. Yeah, I know. You might think that this is going to make the PvEers happy, but I guarantee you there's so much bitching on the forums probably about this that uh, right now Blizzard uh, headquarters is, is lit on fire. So, what was known in the roadmap as Time Running Pandemonium is here. It's called WoW Remix Mists of Pandaria. I say here, we now know about it, and it's actually on the public test realm. That being said, it's not something you can play right now because this is coming along with patch 10.2.7. And right. to be honest, in scope, this thing is gigantic. It, I mean, essentially, it is Mists of Pandaria, Season of Discovery Edition, with maybe right. a dash of, say, a Diablo season in it. There's He's kind of right. It is a combination like of Season of Discovery way, way more gear. Some really interesting powers you can add to your character through that gear. There's a legendary cloak that's got actually a count-wide power. And progression at the end of this will feed back into your main World of Warcraft account. So yep. anytime you're, say, leveling up in this, well, you can be safe in the knowledge of that character will be something you can play in The War Within. And also, this is kind of canon because it does start off with Eternus, that uh, infinite dragon that we ended up working with. Oh, no way. There's the lore expansion. behind this. This, thing? this is all pretty damn crazy. That's kind of cool. do my gut reaction, then we'll break it down. Honestly, my gut reaction here is that I am very excited. This, generally speaking, this content is excellent. Mists of Pandaria is a is an excellent expansion. I was, just saying, that. Is one I was of... just saying the other day, wasn't I? We were ranking all the expansions that Mists of Pandaria is like almost second with me with with Legion in terms of like how much I actually enjoyed that expansion. It's underrated. The greatest race and the leveling in it was game. great. Like, honestly, Throne of Thunder is goddamn <laughs> amazing, and you will be able to do heroic Throne of Thunder that's at right. level seventy. Like that sounds awesome. And mechanically, they are clearly cooking. We've got gear revamps that well just look broken in the amount of power that you'll be able to get. Of course, I mean broken in a good way. There's this yeah system... all these new gear events. I'm sure he's going to get more into this. All these gems that we're going to be able to socket in this thing. Like I said before, they remind me of like Torghast anima just powers. Look... Like, they're really crazy stuff. Like, hey, look at this one, a Hailstorm. Every three seconds, you build a charge of Hailstorm. Upon reaching 10 stacks, you unleash Hail upon your enemies within 50 yards. Each impacting uh, inflicts frost damage. There's a bunch of, like, crazy abilities. Some of them turn you into a giant orb that explodes. Like, really crazy stuff broken in the amount of power that you'll be able to get of course I'm mop did have good, good storytelling way. i agree a system where gear can turn into currency that you can then spend on upgrades and account wide cosmetics and then also they're pitching this as a different way to level and even going through their blog post a lot of how they describe it really does tell me that they're kind of leaning into the idea of people power leveling characters yeah uh, via something like this so honestly I'm pretty damn excited. It's really funny that while Cataclysm Classic Beta is happening, we sort of have Season of Discovery Mists of Pandaria, albeit playing out on the Dragonflight client. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, That's a, it's a pretty basically. damn crazy chaotic time. I think what they realized through Season of Discovery and why they're kind of doing this event is that people do like to level. People enjoy the leveling experience and maybe, you know, you add a couple uh, little sprinkles of extra magic in there like these gems making some crazy abilities, kind of like the runes in Season of Discovery. And uh, you, there you go. You got some magical stuff that people can play with and, and enjoy. And the le like I said, the leveling experience is the best part about Season of Discovery. It's what a lot of people like about it. Uh, now, what is crazy and chaotic and uh, can be a total mess is anybody's given add-on setup and another little oh, setting God, that found in the game tweaks. That video is coming out in a few days, but if you want to watch it right now, it is on Games. Over there, we post things as soon as they're done to our members. There's also multiple lore videos there that haven't made it onto the main YouTube channel just yet because the schedule's been crazy. Um, you'll also get access to the lore walking podcast that we do. And uh, we, of course, all like hanging out in our members' Discord. It's also real talk like it is the best way to help out what we're doing. With that said, I think it's time to break down what WoW Remix is. So the way that this works is you create a new character for this event. That character will be playing on this event, and it can only play with other characters that are a part of this event. Right. And it will be, like, denoted with a little symbol in your login screen. At the end of the event, though, event characters will transition over to your regular modern account, so you could level up a character on this and then just play the war within 
on that character. Yeah, now, that's the probably the, char- the coolest thing about this thing and the difference between it and SOD is that it directly connects to your real account, right? Like you are going to be able to play this character in the War Within. So say you've always wanted to try a shaman, but you don't feel like going through whole, you know, the whole leveling experience. Well, this is going to be leveling 10 through 70, power leveling the shit out of it. I'm guessing it's going to be way quicker than uh, any other type of leveling in the game right now. Plus, you're doing it in a fun new way where you're going to get some crazy, you know, exciting godlike abilities where you're just going to be able to just power level and destroy everything in your path. And you get to go back to the mists of Pandaria, so why not? Carry over is things like character Pandaria is a beautiful level looking and, continent. Uh, stuff that you've collected, right? Like with the account wide transmog. Um, there are some. This is uh, legit like, a legit Diablo season. It kind of well. is. But uh, yeah, that stuff will carry over. Obviously, any. Like gear and crazy broken powers, those will be staying with this. Yeah, event. you won't get to also, bring that stuff with you. To kind of accelerate all of that, there is a legendary item with account wide power that will essentially make any alts that you make for this oh, event what is this? super, super, super powerful. Now, big picture, we've got to talk about leveling, we've got to talk about loot, and we've got to talk about content. So let's break those things down and understand what this event is. So, character levels and progression then. What they've essentially done is they have taken the whole level range of World of Warcraft, well, almost all of it, from 10 to 70, and they've mapped that across all of Mists of Pandaria. So as an example, Jade Forest starts at level 10, and it will scale all the way up to level... It looks like, though, based on these level ranges, you'll be able to stay in any zone for as long as you want, like 20 to 70. Like, they all go to cap level. So, I mean, you can stay in any zone as long as you want, but you'll have to, there's a bottom level in terms of, like, there is a floor that you're going to have to get to. So you can't go to Tau Long really until you're level 30. But you can stay there all the way through level 70. Or same with Valley of the Four Winds. You have to be 20, but you can go there and stay there until you're level 70. An example, Jade Forest starts at level 10, and it will scale all the way up to level 70. And that's yeah. only a few of the scenarios. It's all player choice. You just level how you so want to, I guess. Stuff that somebody on a free trial account will be able to do. And honestly, that's a pretty good first little dip into Modern WoW. Then from 20 to 70, you've got Four Winds, Krasarang Valley, and the 5.1 campaign. Now, the 5.1 campaign is really good. It's the closest that WoW gets to... Uh, I don't really know, good a story sort of like telling. political thriller, maybe it's ugh, some Jack Ryan shit. Let's Honestly. be honest, this was the battle for Azeroth. Like, this, this was the best uh, version of a faction war that we saw in World of Warcraft. Because BFA, we didn't really fight each other, it just became an old god expansion. But if you never lived through the Mists of Pandaria storyline, it was actually really good, and it was like the best version of a faction war that we ever saw. If you remember, you go to there, and the first thing you're doing is like fighting over resources and everything else. It was really good. And I actually enjoyed uh, the Mists of Pandaria story a lot. Um, so what is this actually? We are going to get the new Time Running Pandemonium event. Is a power leveling event where you can level a character from 10 to 70 all the way through Mists of Pandaria only, playing on Pandaria, reopening the raids, doing all that content again with some crazy new power buffs and gems and all kinds of stuff. And then once you're done, that character will transfer over to your main account and you can play that character in the War Within. So this is like a power leveling alt event. Honestly, it, it's pretty good. It's pretty and you're going to get a bunch of you're transmogs though, and mounts and stuff. five or ten levels, you're basically getting some new dungeons, some new scenarios, and new zones as you make your way through the expansion. Then, with uh, the Dread Wastes being available from level 35. Of course, 35 is only half of the level cap. And by the time you hit level 35, uh, you'll be able to do the Heart of Fear dungeon. And at level 25, you'll be able to go into Mogushan Vaults. Then at level 40, unlock the Veil, and that means you can do the Terrace of the Endless Springs. So, a whole bunch of raid Can you raid? Yes, you will be able to raid. up context, but then the patch zones are actually incorporated into the... Oh, what the hell? Um, hey, like, that's going to be awesome. Uh, this is an editing thing. I think Bellular put this video out very quickly, so there was an editing gap there. <laughs> that, like, <laughs> PvP thing going on on the Timeless Isle that you can opt into, so that's really cool. The Isle of Thunder, though, is the highest level zone. You unlock it at level 50. And what I love here, right, is you can go and do the campaigns. You know, the way that they say you can do the 5.1 campaign. The way that you're doing the Isle of Thunder, but instead of just... He didn't oh, mention the Lego cape yet. He's going to talk Warcraft about it. Patch zone. You're sitting there doing all these quests, but you're getting no XP because you're already at max level. I think that this makes a hell of a lot of sense. And it does make me think, hmm, imagine if I could level up a character by, say, doing my Legion class order halls and actually have that be a properly supported thing to do. It would be neat. Anyway, at level 50, you get the Throne of Thunder. At level 60, you get Siege of Orgrimmar. And at level 70, you unlock Heroic Raids. 
heroic raids are going to, I think, be pretty damn insane. And, uh, well, that's because of gear. So here's what's going on with gear. It seems to be mad. In yeah, their post, it's going to be crazy it's broken. Everywhere, like it's in quests, chests, creatures, bosses. The tone, the sort of understanding that I have of it is it's a little bit like just when you play Diablo and gear just kind of falls out of everything. So there's a lot of gear. And as a part of that, you get customizable items. And those items will take gems. And those gems essentially have power that is a bit like a trinket. I'm just going to go yeah, through Even Yeah, even more than a trinket. I described them when we first read them as like, um, uh, what was it? Torgas powers. Or like, what are they called? What, what were we getting back then? Anima powers? Is that what they were called? Where basically there are these crazy abilities where you can just like mow shit down and just go full god mode. That's what these things seem like. They're even bigger than trinkets. So one of them is called Life Storm. Basically, whenever you use it, it calls down a bunch of lightning bolts. And during that storm, flowers grow around you. And five seconds after they bloom, you get a big heal. Another one that looks pretty fun is Thundering Orb. It just bomb. turns you into an orb. You turn and into you an orb. to enemies within 30 yards over four seconds. 30 yards like that that's big that's massive aoe now when you're the orb your damage taken is halved and your speed is reduced by 70 percent. but you are immune to loss of control pretty neat another one is called oblivion sphere basically a big void orb like yeah years and it increases 50 percent. look at this increases critical strike damage taken by by 50 percent. you're gonna blast the shit out of people holy taken crap by enemies within 15 yards of it by 50 percent for 10 seconds I mean, crit damage taken by 50%. Yeah, that's massive. That's really big. And after four seconds, the orb explodes and, uh, yeah, does shadow damage. That's one example for meta sockets. Imagine there the explosion crits. As an example, hailstorm. Wipe everything out. Every three seconds, you build a charge of hailstorm. When you reach 10 stacks, it unleashes it on enemies within 50 yards. So, again, I'm just thinking about a pretty leveled-up Diablo character. Just kind of insane damage from everywhere. Anyway... Every impact of this then applies Numbing Cold, and Numbing Cold reduces movement speed and uh, damage dealt, but attacking removes a stack of Numbing Cold. Now, I only bring this up because they clearly have these kind of like, you know, buffs or debuffs that are shared by multiple different things. In this case, it's Tinker Sockets. Another Tinker Socket is Cold Front, which tinker basically sockets. just gives your abilities a chance to grant all Fits allies. in a tinker socket, and uh, so you can make these sockets. ...as an absorbing shield, and it applies numbing cold to all enemies within 50 yards. And again, that's that numbing cold effect. So potentially you could be building up some like nice synergies with the people in your party. Uh, there are other cool examples like the uh, Tink Master Shield. That basically um, gives you a shield that absorbs damage equal to 20% of your total health. Damn, and it just regenerates go God mode if tanking. you don't suffer any damage for 10 seconds. That's pretty handy. There's also other really nice ones. We then have some cogwheel sockets. And I mean, get a load of this. One of them is Blink. It just gives you blink. Gives you Another blink. one is sprint, which is just like, you know, for a rogue, right? It increases your right. movement speed by 70% for eight seconds. This is... And another one is roll. So you this can... This is season of discovery, man. This is season of discovery in modern WoW. That's what this is. I, that one thing about season of discovery that it's been doing is giving like what would typically be just a regular class ability for a certain class where everybody can basically get it if they find the right rune. So the, this thing, man, look at these blink, sprint, roll. These are all different. You can be... This is this allows you to be a monk, even if you're not one. Roll. So you can clearly do like Season of Discovery and Diablo and WoW, yeah. This is only a small number. We don't know how many like overall slots will support this kind of thing. Hopefully many, and hopefully it Just can be slot out with really, everything. Uh, insane. Now, Go crazy. in addition to all of this, we have our new legendary cloak. So basically, okay, this thing I don't know anything about yet. Cloak gives a buff to all of your event characters on your account, right? And uh, technically it's a, it's an artifact, even not a legendary. And you actually level it up a little bit like an artifact. So you just, as you do stuff, you level it up. Maybe it's artifact power, not 100% sure. But yeah, basically you level that thing up and as it gets stronger, the buff that it puts on your other characters that also gets stronger. That essentially means that uh, if you start a, if you say start a new alt, but you've got a level 70 character that's been doing, say, Heroic Throne of Thunder, well, you'll probably have a really big cloak, and that will make your alts super powerful. Oh. Blizzard says will allow you to level them up really, really fast. Damn, this is like, it'll, you could become an alt factory out of this. So if you level your first one, you've got the legendary cloak. That cloak subsequently buffs every alt that you make in this event after that. So, like, power leveling gets more and more powerful. Holy crap, man. You could create an alt army 
from this event. And I've got to say, I really do wonder how crazy they'll take that. Could it be at the stage where maybe you, uh, you know, you could be soloing scenarios or doing some absolutely crazy stuff? I say, why not? Let I, the I game break. I don't exactly know, but I think it's crazy. a really cool design space for them to be playing with. The next thing then is rewards <laughs> for this. So there are going to be some unique True, ones, but uh, the main thing that I want to talk about, they haven't really done a full reveal of all the rewards, but basically the new system is bronze. And the way yeah. it works is this. If you get gear and you don't want the gear, you can convert that into bronze. Bronze is a currency. You spend it at the bazaar where you can buy upgrades or you can buy account bound cosmetics. And from their description, this is basically a humongous number of, of cosmetics like class sets, mounts, and it also yeah. is including unreleased colors of mounts. As an example, they showed off a golden Elgalon mount. So ultimately, that seems really cool, right? Um, we've never really seen that sort of using gear as a currency thing done within World of Warcraft. I know some other games do that, so that's uh, that's certainly interesting. I mean, we've had ideas like that, say the the scrapper. Yes, uh, Silar, you're right. I mean, it's leveling, so why not make it broken and OP? I totally agree. And it's an outside of retail event, basically. It's in retail, right? Like you're going to be able to take these characters eventually over, but once you do, they're going to lose all their godlike abilities. But in the meantime, yeah, why not just let people kind of break the game, go god mode? One thing he's not mentioning about this bronze, he did say it in passing a little bit, is that you can use it to upgrade your gear. But what I was reading about on the side was like this upgrading is like never ending. Like you can continually upgrade your gear to a point where it just becomes ridiculous. So you could basically upgrade your gear nonstop, nonstop upgrading, going full on just insane god mode. And like I said, if you break the game, so what? It doesn't matter. It's a, it's an outside of the game event. <laughs> or the Obliterum Forge stuff in Legion. Scared the shit out of me for a yeah, second. This actually thing. does seem a bit new, a bit innovative. My key takeaways then for this, well, I, I mean, I'm really wondering. <laughs> Warning. Looking at the sorts of effects that players are getting, like how hard will the hardest heroic be at level 70? Because it seems like the player power increases are going to be absolutely Insane. ginormous. Yeah. It seems the amount of gear that you have is, is ginormous. And th like, <laughs> I know when Blizzard says almost unlimited power. Some of that is just going to be a Palpatine joke, but the vibes that I get are very much that your character can just yeah. be absolutely geared to the tits doing crazy damage. Geared That's to the tits, I like that. Uh, basically, I feel like this is gonna be, if you're at the end of this, you're basically gonna be, if, you, if you've if you run through Torghast, you're at the end of it and you've gotten all the best Torghast abilities. Remember how, you know, you it was you and your luck kind of what you got? But if you when you got all the best ones, you used to be able to like just b obliterate everything in your path. And I feel like that's what you're going to be at the end of this Missa Pandaria event, this remix event, is if you you basically gear out, you get all the best gems, you get all the best slotted stuff, you'll probably be able to do some insane things at the end things, of this Well, thing. the Rathian quest, is that going to be here? They actually removed it from the game. Um, for context here, in Missa Pandaria, through the entire expansion, you had a legendary quest line with Rathian. That's what got you the cloak, right? So it was like, it was cool to get that player power stuff. But actually, some of the scenarios, some of the stuff that they put together for that quest, it was just really cool. So if Blizzard would be able to restore that, that would be particularly nice. Maybe if they could do that via this new legendary cloak, I mean, that would sort of fit perfectly. Yeah. Then like power design, gear design, like what are, the, what are they doing there? Are they perhaps testing things? You know, like uh, take the Mechagon patch. That was an example of Blizzard trying to shake things up a bit with what uh, what your gear could do. It really seems like they're kind of doing that at a very grand scale. I also wonder how fast will all of this be? The way that they talk about it in the blog it post. It sounds like it's it... going to be lightning quick. It sounds like this is going to be like power leveling uh, to the max. And then, like we said, once you get that legendary cloak and you have level 70, every alt that you make after that is going to be even quicker. So who knows how many alts you'll be able to level up through this event. They haven't told us how long the event's going to last either. I'm guessing it has to end before uh, the next season starts. It might end by the time pre-patch hits or something for the War Within. Uh, sorry, not next season. I meant next expansion. So by the time the War Within launches, for sure, I'm, I'm guessing this event will be over. I don't think they're just going to keep it open for alts to keep boosting through. But during the time that it's open, I think you're going to be able to level whatever the hell you want as fast as you want look like gear will be falling out of everything. And of course, I think this could be extremely impactful for the future. Though, let's not always just talk about the future. The now is also important. Yeah, and yeah, I meant when next I look expansion, at this, It does actually look season. like something that I want to play now. So personally, I've got very fond memories of all of these raids. I do think that the likes of, say, Throne of Thunder, I mean, I think that is one of the best raids ever made. I think it really is fantastic. So 
being able to do yeah, that there are very like, good rates experientially, in this. that's extremely novel. And there's no way that we've been able to do this before, right? Like, yes, this is a this is reusing content, but I think this is a smart way to reuse content. Um, at the end of the day, like, I don't think reuse is a dirty word, as long as we're getting new content, of course. But if you can basically have a small team have a massive impact using content that you've already made before, it yeah. seems like a completely yeah. reasonable thing for them to do as a dev. And in this case, a very large percentage of World of Warcraft's player base, they'll know that many people loved Mop and almost see it as the good old days. They'll know that uh, whenever Cataclysm was, was happening for uh, the classic project, that so many people just thought, oh, skip cataclysm classic let's just go straight on to mop like they they know that people love mop uh, they know I do. that loads of people have not played this content mm -hmm. um, certainly this is not going to feel like an authentic experience or, or you know exactly like it was in the past True. but it kind of never would have been because we've all sort of i guess grown got better at the game etc um, as players but what i do think is that this will be a more complete feeling version of things than if we say just got time walking throne of thunder so yeah i uh, wonder uh, the thing i'm wondering is because you're going to go from like 10 to 70 and you know mop was originally a 10 levels uh you know continent right when that expansion came out we gained 10 levels by going through the continent i wonder if going 10 to 70 is going to take as long as it took you to go from i don't know what the levels were back then would it have been um 80 to 90 or 70 to 70 to 80 70 to 80 maybe so 10 levels it was five. Oh, it was five. Oh my god so it's gonna be even quicker we went 85 to 90 at the time that's right it was a five level expansion so going through it i wonder if it's gonna take as long to go through all these it would be 60 levels 10 to 70 if it'll take as long as the five levels took us because that's gonna be crazy quick i mean you'd be able to do you'd be able to do an alt a week if you were playing just at a decent pace on that front, uh, I'm excited. I want to dive into these zones again, relive good old memories, but then also see what they've cooked up in terms of the gameplay mechanics. And it's nice that rewards-wise, they clearly have got plenty here. And it may not always be like brand new. If shiny you go, things, if you go like, if you really know life, you probably be able to level it all to all the way to cap level in two days, two or three days. You'd be able to level. Honestly, a lot of the stuff from back then was really cool, and being able to get those recolors is uh, is pretty great. And also, if you haven't played Mists of Pandaria, I mean, yeah, you could go farm transmogs on your regular character, or you could play this and just earn a bunch of transmogs while you're also essentially playing a new feeling game. So honestly, I think this is all super smart. Now, as much as I'm focusing on the now, I do think that this could be pretty impactful for the future. The first thing to remember is that both this and Plunderstorm have been described as experiments by Blizzard. And look, wh right. what is the point of an experiment? Wh what's all that all about? Well, generally speaking, right, you form a hypothesis and then you go and you try to test it via experimentation to see if you're right or not. I think that when they're doing this, they're clearly looking for, you know, they're clearly trying to learn lessons. I mean, if you take a look at Plunderstorm, you can see some design ideas, yes, obviously from Spellbreak and Battle Royales, right. but also even just little things from other games, like the way that you don't have to do tab targeting in the way that you normally would in World True. of Warcraft. It turns out the game does kind of support combat like that, and it can be really fun. So whenever I look at this, I mean, this bronze system, right, where you can turn the gear into a currency, is that them maybe testing something? Then this idea of like meta gems that have an impact similar to that of a big trinket. Is that a design space we could see Blizzard move into? I wonder if there, some of these abilities are ever going to make it into the real game because they're testing out some really crazy stuff here with some of these orb abilities, these different gem stuff that they're doing. Maybe eventually they could support this in the real game. Like not this type of leveling, but like just some of these abilities. This could be a testing ground for them, right? Because if you break the game in this event, who cares? You break the game in retail, it takes a bunch of patches and fixing, and you've made mistakes now. we got to apologize to the player base for messing shit up. It's much different. So they could definitely use this as a testing ground. Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll look at that in a second, Caden. Expansion. I mean, there's been the whole talk It's the about war with an alpha in disguise. Right? I mean, yeah. Are people uh, excited for them or not? Well, what if in a future expansion, maybe instead of doing like a big build around system version of borrowed power, what if they do some of that and maybe take a little bit of the design space of your class sets and maybe they put that onto a meta gem or something? I, I mean, I, I don't know, but the point is. I think they could learn from this, and yeah. that's that's cool. Also, Blizzard traditionally had been so conservative. Like, they would never be the first mover on anything. And I know, yes, it 
it took them what seven years after PUBG to do um you know do a battle royale thing and wow right. um, but i think you get the point right this previously if you go back to say the days of shadowlands like blizzard was a developer that did not listen it was you know they, they thought that they knew best they clearly didn't and yeah. now things have truly changed and yeah i've got this is definitely like a first for a wow i don't think any other mmo has ever done anything like this where you power level through a single expansion and then that that character gets to play the new expansion when it's done that's uh, i i don't know if it gets to correct me if i'm wrong i haven't played final fantasy i don't think any other um mmo has done this yet so this is really like but you know going into a new adventure in terms of like the wow dev team they never freaking innovated this time part of quibbles with dragonflight you guys know that but as an overall like game experience dragonflight <laughs> is far more robust than uh, you know than other versions of modern wow have been so they've listened there and now we see them actually trying shit that genuinely is new and different yeah like we have not had this before this is truly new the other thing that had me thinking of then was the new player experience because here you can just level up a character to max in one expansion and not just doing leveling zones but also you know doing campaign stuff right like even take the um the throne of thunder campaign that was great like true you're doing spy shit with uh toshi toshi i believe she was called and that, that was just a really good campaign 5.1 great campaign uh, again there's so much of wow's like actually good content that just players never really see yeah. these days the story thread overall is really good too the whole horde versus alliance early on and everything that's a lot of fun so i think yeah a new player might have fun with this the only thing i would say is they're going to get so powerful and get all these neat abilities and then they're going to go to retail and all their abilities are gone they're probably going to feel like they got power stripped like they just got to strip naked in the street or something because a lot none of this stuff's going to carry over besides your transmogs and your character now that's level 70. and if you're a new player you never really see blizzard pay things off right because you're just going through level up zones but you're never seeing the expansion stories that those level up zones sort of eventually lead to uh, whereas here you can just play the entire of Mists of Pandaria, and game story included, and hit max level. I yeah, think and do great. the raids. I've got to Pretty wonder, cool. could they do that for Legion? Could they do that for other expansions? I definitely um, think they could. It certainly would be an interesting way to take, well, Chromy Time version 2. Another factor, I suppose, in this is, could they be testing what a new or different leveling flow for World of Warcraft could look like here? Like, not exactly sure. But anyway, that not exactly sure. Not exactly sure. And we need to see how this all plays out in PTR. But yeah. This S tier is editing. Not exactly sure. We do need to wait and see how this actually <laughs> pans out in PTR and live. My TLDR, though, is that this He's is glitching. a that is actually trying new shit and uh, well, trying to earn our subscription back. Because there then is the question of value. I can say, ultimately, Plunderstorm how was is it targeted to my interests. I love it. Really. Everybody failed. Has cost like the world. initially when I saw this thing, honestly, the failure. I just I'm going off of that, boy. She the, the initially when they released this thing, I was kind of disappointed. I was like, eh, this is like some kind of side event, and I don't even do alts. I don't care about it. But I'll be honest, like I like that they're taking a risk. I like that they're trying something new with leveling. We did recently talk about how leveling is a big problem in the game still. So uh, I, I like that they're trying it. Why not try it and see? Maybe hey, maybe they do a Wrath of the Lich King remix. And then you could just play it just for the hell of it and have fun with Wrath of the Lich King. Fun. I have like 350,000 plunder. This could be, right? could I be really a good thing for the game. Storm, so I'm obviously getting value out of my WoW sub for that. I am tinkering around doing things on, um, you know, on Modern. I do actually have plans <laughs> to play Season 4 content whenever that comes out. 1027 also will have the Harbinger quest, the Troll and Draenei Heritage Yeah, armor. a lot of other stuff coming It actually too. says it'll have a new holiday event. Like, if you go back and look at the wording, it says new holiday event. It doesn't say that they're, like, updating an old one. So, don't really know what that is. I don't, um, I don't know. I wonder, but they, 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 um, they're kind of revamping the, what's it called? The summer event, that flaming summer event. I forget what the hell they call it. Um, they're kind of turning it into a pride event, honestly, from what I've seen so far from data mining. So, maybe that's what they're talking about is, like, a pride, uh, you know... That's going to be controversial as shit. Oh, God, the comments on that stuff's going to But anyways, I don't think... Uh, don't read too much into it, because I don't think we're really getting a new holiday event. Yeah, that shot's fired. Yeah, no, I do. I saw that, yeah. So the new um, summer event uh, looks like they're just revamping the whole uh, Summer of the Flame. God, I can't remember what the hell it's called. But that summer event is getting a pride twist on it, and I think that's what they're doing. 
and then yeah, there's there's the season four and uh, the war within Alpha. Yeah, pride, which, you know, Pride honestly, Month. I think could be in a week, two weeks. I mean, the image says that War Within Alpha happens before season four launches, and we know season four launches on the twenty third. So my God, yeah, it the is Midsummer an absolutely Festival. intense That's what it is. time. There is so much going on. Wow. The part of this could be the negative though is. Uh, Yes, this is a time-limited event. I think if Blizzard was wise, they wouldn't really lean too much on that on their marketing. Um, so there is the angle of FOMO to talk about. I think if you look at how this thing is designed, or at least like what their goals seem to be, I can understand it being a sort of time-limited event. And it's kind of similar with Plunderstorm, where really I think Plunderstorm itself, it doesn't, like, it does have depth, but it doesn't have the depth to be a long-term game mode forever and i think whenever you design well something you know you add new maps you add new abilities it just becomes a seasonal thing yeah i mean i do think it could have some longevity this definitely seems this leveling event seems more like a uh, end of expansion hey you want to get some alts ready for the new expansion kind of thing i feel like that's what it's going to become is like an end of expansion remix event will hit every end and then you'll level up alts and play your whatever you want to do in the next expansion something in such I think Plunderstorm actually has more longevity than this does and uh, it's not something that you're kind of burdening yourself with uh, the upkeep of forever because look if they were to do an evergreen version of this an evergreen version of Plunderstorm then they always have to have people working on those things or at least maintaining them and they probably True. don't want uh, to do that but if the framing of it being a experiment and therefore something they don't have to commit to forever if that means that we do get new, different, odd, wacky, interesting things happening within the Warcraft franchise, then yes, I'm all for it, especially when those uh, those lessons can be rolled back into the game in a way that perhaps is designed to be evergreen. I mean, you could take a look yeah. at this event here, the, the remix, and then you could probably work that into a Chromie Time V2 that right. would be a permanent feature of World of Warcraft. You could probably look at Plunderstorm and think, okay, could uh, could you have an epic battleground that is inspired by that? Could you have, yeah, um, cool. you know, bring in a little bit of crystalline conflict and just make some sort of version of WoW PvP that maybe would appeal to a far more broad audience? So you can see readily how these time-limited experiments will at least teach them lessons and may dovetail into future content. Yeah, they're experimental places where they could try crazy things that they would never be able to try in retail and see how it works. And if they like it, yeah, I think it could leak into the real game at the some point. Day, this was called WoW Remix Mists of Pandaria. That does just suggest there will be WoW Remix other shit. Yeah. Which would be pretty cool. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that, this was... Okay, the most cracked thing they could do is what? WoW Remix Shadowlands, and they somehow oh. try to make it right. Um, oh, who no. knows? Who knows? I mean, Blizzard, if you make me... If, if you can get me oh. to willingly go back to Corthia, hmm. then, um, well, I think... You'll WoW know, Remix WoW Shadowlands. Remix Shadowlands was a success, but uh, I do kind of doubt that. Anyway, that is it for today's video. Uh, right. Games, head over there. You can watch some of our currently unpublished stuff. The and editing is so jank. Hang out with the other members. He's talking. The walking it's podcast, which I think is, man, it must be well over 40 hours of podcast content now. And uh, we are, in fact, <laughs> cooking up some, uh, some new stuff over there. Okay, that is the deal. Let me know what you think about this. I'll see you next time. Th th this was definitely, like, rushed out video. But, hey, I understand. This was, like, really interesting news. Jailer Remix. Yeah, give the Jailer a full head of hair. Shrink his nipples a little bit. And we'll see what happens with the, uh, with the Shadowlands Remix.